How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to take a look at our next NAT topic, which is going to be destination-based NAT. So this will be another NAT to NAT, where we're gonna be mapping a public IP to a private IP for single service. So the concept of this is very similar to that of static NAT, except for where it is reversing the logic, where with a static NAT, you are basically, you're tying it to the source and then to the outside and you're doing a one-to-one -one mapping, right? So we understand that process. Destination NAT is designed for traffic that is coming in from the outside and that's the whole point of it. Very similar in operation to what we already covered, except for the, remember that bi-directional command that we clicked on, the B-I-D-R, or we check the box and we translated the IP and all that type of stuff. Well, we're not doing that in, in this particular example. We're gonna be natting traffic from win 10-2 to router five and so that we can keep additional services running, right? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the telnet. We're also gonna do the HTTP and we're gonna create another, pro, another policy uh, we'll create a new NAT entry, so the NAT entry will be created. We're also going to create a, another security policy to allow this traffic to actually come through and do its job, and then get all that stuff squared away and running. And that will allow us to do some of those other high availability aspects of things and stuff like that. High availability meaning that we'll be able to provide the reachability to something, not necessarily HA like we're going to do over here. That'll be another set of videos that we'll do, but we'll be able to provide the, the availability to a device from the internet to a user that needs to access it without having to use a VPN in order to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the config and get this party started. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen off. We're gonna go ahead and pull up Palo Alto and I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the way. So here we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and resynchronize, log in as rriker and log in. That will create an administrative session. And we're gonna be focusing strictly on outside access inbound. We're not gonna be worrying about trying to get inbound access or uh, outbound access from the inside. So what we're gonna go do is on the, uh, the policies page, we're gonna come here down to NAT. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna be doing this for iOS 5, right? So I'm not gonna go and create any objects out of the gate. What I'm gonna go do is do the add. The name of this guy is going to be iOS 5 uh, destination NAT. And then underneath the original packet, the source zone we're gonna call is gonna be the outside. So we're gonna add the outside. The destination zone is also going to be the outside the destination interface we won't actually play with, but the destination address that we're trying to point to is the public IP that we're gonna be pointing traffic to router five on. So we're gonna add here and we're going to create an address. This guy is gonna be iOS five public IP. And we're gonna come down here and the IP will be 101.0.0.5. I'm gonna click on OK. So that gives us a public IP address that we're gonna be able to leverage. Now that we have that in play, we have our source zone is gonna be the outside. We have our destination zone as the outside, and we have our destination address as R5's public IP. We come over here to the translated packet. The translation type, in this case here, will be the destination address translation. So this is where we're trying to point to. Here we're going to say a static IP, and what we need to specify is the IP of the server. So we're gonna come in here, we can hit the drop down, and we're gonna add another address. We're gonna call this iOS 5 private IP. And then in here we're gonna type in 10.1.5.5 and click on OK. And that's where this comes into play. Now, what we're gonna do once we have this operational and working, we can do a port translation, so a dynamic PAT. Remember, we're doing a dynamic NAT right now, right, from the dynamic destination-based NAT. Even though it's statically defined, 
it is a oh, static static nap, but it's on the outside. So if we want to change the translated port, so if we don't want to port translate, for example, 8080 to 80, or 84443 to 80, sorry, the other way around. If we didn't want to translate 23 to 23, or 80 to 80, or 443 to 443, we can actually change either the source or destination port in order for that to work. We're not going to play around with port address translation right now, or what they call port forwarding. We're going to just click on OK, and that gets us that part operational. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this guy up to be in front of the internet NAT. So now iOS 5 destination NAT. If we come across here, our destination address is going to be router 5's outside, or I'm sorry, Palo Alto 1's, um, the iOS 5 public IP 101.005, and then a destination address is going to be, we're going to be natting over to iOS 5's actual interface IP. Now we have to go and create a policy. So we're going to click on policy. I'm going to add the new policy. And we're going to call this iOS 5. And we're going to call this uh, Telnet HTTP. It's going to be an interzone policy. And on the source tab, we're going to click on the source zone. And we're going to choose the, int, the outside. Because this is where the traffic will be coming from. And on the destination tab, we will choose the destination address here. Destination address is going to be the public IP of iOS 5, right? But the destination zone is going to be the DMZ iOS 5 because we're pointing traffic coming in on the firewall to the IP address of 101.0.0.5 here on the Palo Alto firewall. And then we're going to be moving that to the zone of DMZ iOS 5, which is going to be this connection right here. And that's where we're going to do the translation. Now, when it comes to service, we're going to come over here and we're going to add Telnet and we're going to add HTTP. So we can do those same tests. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And that should be everything that I need to have. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit that config. And I'm going to pause the video until this is done, and then we will come back once you guys are squared away. Okay, well, our config should be good. I'm going to test it, even though I want to move this up higher. So let's go ahead and test it real quick from Win 10-2. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to add a tab on Firefox. And I'm going to plug in here 101.0.0.5 and hit the Enter key. So we, get, we should get prompted for a login. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. And so we should be able to get a connection, which we are. I'm going to come back over here to Monitor. And we should see inbound connections coming from DMZ to iOS 5. And we should see iOS 5 is working the way that it's intended to. So that's a good sign. We're seeing the things that we want to see. And I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go ahead and open up. Um, some reason Telnet's taking its sweet old time. So let's go ahead and pull this up real quick. It doesn't really make a difference at this point here with the policies because even though this one and this one are more specific or specific for what they're doing, this one's also specific. So I'm gonna come over here and grab iOS 5, load this, and I'm gonna change the port to be five. I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Open. And we should get a prompt. We're going to go ahead and log in. And there we are. We're logged into iOS 5. If I come back over here to Monitor, we should see the inbound connection from Router 6 DM, from outside to DMZ iOS 5. And if we expand on this, actually, let's just do, open this up. We can see that it's coming in iOS 5. Telnet HTTP and it's hitting the NAT rule of iOS 5 destination NAT. So that ladies and gentlemen is how you do a destination based NAT. So now if I wanted to change the way that we're doing things, if I wanted to change the way that you would set up a port forwarding rule, you need to change the port that you're pointing towards. Okay. So what we need to do, what we, the simple way to do this is on the NAT policy itself, 
is come over here to policies and NAT. We're going to click on as soon as it loads, iOS 5 destination NAT. And underneath the translated packet, the translated port, as you can see, it wants us to do to some other value. So for example, I can come over here to this guy right here onto iOS 5, and I can come up here to the IP HTTP, uh, the port here, instead of saying 80, I can say 8080. Okay, so what that would mean, would mean this. I can come in here and we're, remember we're doing a, a translation here. So now we're no longer, if I modify this list, that's gonna be a problem because now it's doing a basically an IP to IP mapping. If I wanna get specific with my NAT rules, I need to go in here and I need to create a new NAT entry and do it based off of port. And that's where it gets a little bit more sticky and you have to be a little bit more cognizant of what you're trying to do. The port forwarding process is not is really no different than what you've already seen. The only difference is, is in the translated packet, you've got an incoming on 23 and you're translating over to something else. Oftentimes, you're gonna do this on the public side first and you're gonna bring this in. The drawback to that is, is most people aren't going to point to the non-default port. The web browser is gonna point to 443. And then when you bring the traffic in, you're gonna NAT it from 443 to over to 8443, something along those lines. So there's a number of ways you can do it, but that just gives you an example of how that would come into play. But you would have to change whatever the port number is on the remote end to be listening for that particular port value. If you don't, then it's not gonna make a difference. Now I can come in here and change the, uh, the IP HTTP port number, but the moment you start getting into port address translation on the destination side, you need to be more specific with your rules because by default, this NAT policy and this security policy, they're expecting just the defaults to come across because I'm not being specific enough here. I'm too generic with this with this rule. Again, if we could look at the, the way that it's built out in the translated packet, we're doing an IP to IP NAT, network address translation, from the outside or destination to the out to the inside. So if I wanted to modify that, I'd have to come in here and create a new policy, or I'm sorry, a new NAT rule that would be matching on the, the port number that we're trying to get to and all that type of stuff. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. It does work, but you just need to take, need to take into consideration what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video. I'll try to keep it pretty short, but that's basically how this stuff comes into play. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.